Joining me now, Trey Gowdy, former chairman of the House Oversight Committee and a Fox News contributor. Good to see you tonight, sir. Thank you for being here. Yes, so, what, you know, what do you make of all of, you know, John Brennan and, and James Clapper very upset that, that Bill Barr had the audacity in their terms uh, to use the word, the spying word yesterday? Well, he did use the spying word. I prefer the word surveillance. I'm sure they're synonyms, and if they're not, they're first cousins. So they are, according to Webster's. The word if you use the word surveillance, then what Bill Barr said is the least newsworthy thing that was said by anyone yesterday. We already know the United States government was doing surveillance on at least two members of the right. Trump campaign. What we don't know is were there others, when did it begin, what's the factual predicate? I find it amusing that John Brennan says he received bad information. Uh, the reason that you don't use bad information or to prevent you from using bad information, you're supposed to investigate, corroborate, vet, none of which was done with the dossier. And Clapper, just, what a drama king, to use the words uh, amazed and stunned. What Barr said is we're going to look into whether or not the powers given the United States government were used to surveil a presidential campaign. I would hope everyone would want that yeah, to happen. And, you know, when you look back, I went back and looked at the transcript from yesterday a little more closely, and he, he says, you know, I want to look at the IG report, uh, Horowitz's report, which is coming out, I guess, in the June time frame, late May, early June time frame. He said, I want to look at the investigations that were done on the Hill, and, and then I want to see if, if there are questions that still aren't answered, and if there are questions that still aren't answered about whether or not there was um, un substantiated uh, that there wasn't a predicate for basically spying, surveilling members of the Trump campaign, then I think we all need to know about that because you really spying on a, a campaign is, is kind of a big deal, right? Spying on any American is a big deal. Doing surveillance, which is why you have to go through certain evidentiary checkpoints before you can surveil an American or intercept communications or wiretap or even in some states even have a consensual conversation if you're a law enforcement officer wearing a wire, which also happened in this case. I, I, I am really, mm -hmm. to use Clapper's word, stunned that anyone would not want to know what was the factual predicate for the mm -hmm. United States government to monitor the conversations and activities of two campaign officials, regardless of whether they were working for a Republican or a Democrat. I would think all Americans would want to know, how are you using these awesome powers that we entrust you with? I want to play uh, some of the reaction to, to Bill Barr, who, you know, prior to yesterday um, had a, a reputation that was fairly even across Republicans and Democrats in terms of how they looked at him and his career. It seems to have changed, you know, on, on a dime. And here's some of that reaction on the Hill. If he wanted to be Michael Cohen's replacement as Donald Trump's mouthpiece, he should have applied for that job. It just raises, again, the issue of whether or not Barr really is the independent attorney general that this country needs. Did Attorney General Barr embarrass himself yesterday, disgrace himself yesterday? Yes, absolutely. What do you think about that, Trey? I think that last voice was Eric Swalwell's, and for your viewers uh, that don't know who that is, that's a member of the Judiciary Committee and the Intelligence Committee from California. He's running for president, which I'm sure none of your viewers are familiar with, and they won't be a year from now. So he's trying to get attention. Nancy Pelosi said that Barr was off the rails. If anyone in the country would understand being off the rails, it would be Speaker Pelosi. This is a guy that was voice voted by the Senate. Democrats loved him. They thought he was an institutionalist. He was going to revive the Department of Justice. What they don't like is what he summarized in the Mueller report. That's what they don't like. No collusion, and we decided there's no obstruction of justice. And now, if that wasn't bad enough, now he's going to say something as crazy as, we're going to look at the origins of this investigation to make sure the law was followed. That's what they're upset about. Well, I, that obviously has a lot of people very nervous uh, to hear that. Um, I want to put up a statement that Rod Rosenstein just said just a, a short time ago this evening about Bill Barr, the attorney general. He said he's being as forthcoming as he can. And so this notion that he's trying to mislead people, I think it's just completely bizarre. What do you say about that? Um, I, I, you know, Martha, I'm in a really small minority. I think Bill Barr is being more forthcoming than, than he should be. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think the Department of Justice should publish derogatory information on someone who has not been charged. 
So when you get Schiff and others talking about beyond a reasonable doubt, that's what you have to have to convict. They don't even have evidence enough to charge, which is probable cause. So uh, Bill Barr is going to be far more transparent than I think if the shoe were on the other foot and this was a Democrat AG with an uncharged person. Remember what Comey did. And all of us said, when did the government start holding press conferences and announcing derogatory information on people who were not charged? That's exactly what the Democrats want Barr and Mueller to do with President Trump. And it's worth remembering that that's exactly what Rod Rosenstein outlined in the memo uh, that gave the president the substance to decide to go ahead and fire Jim Comey. At least that's the sequence of events uh, uh, as it was laid out. So it's interesting to hear him say uh, that he's sticking up for Bill Barr. They also worked together very closely throughout this entire process, uh, overseeing the special counsel to the extent that, um, that that they did that. I want to say one other thing here about Greg Craig, who's a name that, you know, uh, people have heard a lot over the years. Uh, he was in the Obama administration, a lawyer. Um, he now has a similar problem, it sounds like to me, and you can tell me what the, his legal situation is, kind of like what Mike Flynn went through in terms of not registering as a federal agent and doing work for the Ukraine. How much trouble do you think that Greg Craig, this former Obama official, may be in? Well, I think he's been indicted for making a false statement to the FBI, which is what Papadopoulos and Flynn uh, we're also charged with, I, I, I guess if you're looking for a bright side, um, it is that neither Republicans nor Democrats uh, can make um, false material statements to an FBI agent during the course of an investigation. So if you want um, a, a blind justice system, if you want her to wear a blindfold, I think that's good. Uh, he's presumed innocent. Um, it is Mueller indicting a Democrat. So for, for everyone who said there are 13 angry Democrats that are only targeting Republicans, I'm pretty sure this defendant is a I just want to give a, 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 this, a chance to play this soundbite. Uh, this is from Greg Craig uh, sticking up for himself. Watch. This prosecution is unprecedented and unjustified. I am confident that both the judge and the jury will agree with me. Quick thought before we go, Trey. Um, he better hope the jury agrees with him, and if he were that confident, he wouldn't be having a press conference right now. All right. Trey Gowdy, always a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. Good to yes, see you tonight. Thank you.